Welcome to Nicholas 11 x 12 I've been waiting for this product to be released for quite some time now, and now it's finally here. A true highlight to me, the Cryorg A40 Ultimate Hybrid Liquid Cooler. Hybrid because there's a special fan included to install onto the pump to basically combine the best of both worlds, water and air cooling. As far as I know, no other manufacturer has done it before, it's actually a brilliant idea by Cryorg. Three versions are available from the A-series coolers, the standard A40, the A40 Ultimate and the A80. The A40 Ultimate features an increased radiator thickness of 11mm compared to the standard A40. The A40s are 240mm radiators, the A80 is 280mm. The A40 Ultimate I'm looking at today currently costs about 110 US dollars, which is competitive I'd say. Thank you so 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 much Cryorg for first of all entering the liquid cooler market and for sending me this unit. I really appreciate it. In the box, the all-in-one liquid cooler itself with pre-applied thermal paste. Two 120mm fans, then the part that makes this a hybrid cooler, the so-called airflow fan that goes onto the pump unit, also included of course the back plates, brackets, screws and so on. Everything's out of metal by the way. Last but not least, the installation guide. The A40 Ultimate is a beautiful unit, featuring radiator dimensions of 272 by 120 by 385 millimeters. We are definitely talking of a high-end 240 millimeter aluminum radiator here, and the matte black paint finish on it adds a little extra to the aesthetics if that matters of course. The two fans that mount onto the radiator are Cryorx QF120 performance fans, which are fairly well built and are equipped with these rubber pads to reduce vibration noise. The QF120 performance are 120mm fans that spin at about 600 to 2200 RPM, feature a 13 to 37 decibel noise level and allow an airflow of up to 83 CFM. The cables are nicely nylon sleeved. Cryorg decided to go for rubber tubing on their A series of coolers, tubes that measure 350mm in length and feature a diameter of 10mm. Whether rubber is the right choice here I don't know, both rubber and plastic tubing comes with its advantages and disadvantages. What I can tell you about these particular tubes is they're well made but can't be angled on the pump unit since they simply go straight in. The pump is built on a basis of Acetex Gen 5 pump with some changes to increase performance while maintaining a low noise level. Although the top of the pump unit may doesn't look all that promising in terms of aesthetics, it serves a very practical purpose. That being the option and possibility to install the included airflow fan in either a push or a pull orientation to provide extra airflow to hot components such as overclocked RAM, graphics cards or most likely voltage regulators, the VRM. That could for instance improve systems stability and the lifespan, especially when overclocking. The fan requires some force to slide in, but adds to prevent vibration noise. The fan plugs in directly into the fan port on the pump unit. The specs of the so-called airflow fan are the following. It's a 70mm fan, fan speed 1500 to all the way up to 3000 rpm, noise level 15 to 27 decibels and airflow 25 cfm. Well sounds interesting but I have some prejudice towards small fans regarding noise levels. But maybe that fan will prove me wrong, we'll see. The pump requires auxiliary power in form of a SATA power connection, since the optional airflow fan and the two main fans plug in directly into the pump's Y headers. To control the pump speed this PWM cable connects to the motherboard's CPU fan header. All cables are kept black, that's nice. On the bottom a cold plate copper base with pre-applied thermal paste. The A40 Ultimate is compatible with the most important sockets such as Intel LGA 1150, 1151, 1155, 1156, 1366 and 2011 of course. AMD's AM3+, plus AM3, AM2+, plus AM2, FM2+, plus FM2 and last but not least FM1. Now in terms of aesthetics, the A40 Ultimate is really appealing to me even though its primary intention is meant to be practical. With or without the airflow fan, it's a beautiful CPU cooler, although I rather prefer the look with the fan not attached. As always, I'll be installing it onto my test bench Cooler Master, kindly provided me for such purposes. The installation was extremely simple and fast. Definitely my all-time favorite liquid cooler installation method that several other manufacturers make use of as well. But none of them I've tested so far have used such high quality parts yet. We'll see how well this A40 Ultimate manages to cool my overclocked Intel i7 4770K CPU. I'm sp- 
speechless. Never would have expected such good results from the A40 Ultimate, especially not at that price point. We're talking of just $110. The Corsair H105 currently costs more despite performing worse. Sure, some of you might say, hey, 7 degrees aren't that much. Yes, indeed, you have a point. But when overclocking, every single degree counts. Up until now, I haven't come across such a good performing AIO liquid cooler. Every other AIO cooler gets blown away by this unit by Cryoric. The results instantly made this A40 Ultimate my favorite liquid cooler. And we have to keep in mind that insanely good price point of just $110. Amazing price performance ratio too, not just cooling performance. As for noise level, I will admit, on default settings it's a bit higher than on most other liquid coolers, but not by much and that's just because the pump and fan speed are controlled by the CPU fan header on the motherboard. With some tweaking you could change the settings to your liking. That's exactly what I did and ended up with a very quiet cooling unit. Neither the fans nor the pump is loud. The pump in fact runs quieter than any other I've tested so far. And surprisingly not even the small airflow fan is loud. I'm impressed. The disadvantage with liquid coolers is that all the components in the CPU socket area can't benefit from active air cooling since it's just the pump that sits there. Air coolers on the other hand kinda additionally also cool the VRMs and components surrounding the CPU for instance. That's why Cryorg decided to make their liquid cooler a hybrid one, hence the airflow fan. And Cryorg's plan is successful. The surrounding components indeed show lower temperatures at full load with the CPU overclocked. In my case a 10 degrees celsius difference after just 10 minutes of stress testing. Impressive. Especially since my motherboard already has really beefy VRM heatsinks to start with and even runs super cool without any additional cooling. Still we got to see a big difference of 10 degrees. Just imagine how well this would work on boards with worse VRM heatsinks or smaller ones. Mission accomplished I'd say. Honestly I've always looked at Corsair as the number one manufacturer for AIO water coolers in terms of design, price and performance. Now my opinion changed and I gotta say the crown without any doubt has to go to Cryorg. With the A40 Ultimate they show the PC enthusiast world how it's done. That's why I even replaced my Corsair H105 unit in my main system with this A40 Ultimate by Cryorg. But I didn't attach the airflow fan to the pump since I find it a bit more appealing aesthetically this way and I'm not overclocking my i7 6700K CPU anyway for now therefore don't need to additionally cool surrounding components. Instead of the QF120 performance fans that originally come with this liquid cooler, I went for Deepcool's TF120s, the white LED version to light up the system a little. Cryorg did everything right here with this cooler and proves they're a manufacturer that needs to be taken very serious. With that said, I definitely, definitely recommend this Cryorg A40 Ultimate Hybrid Liquid Cooler. Of course it goes without saying, it clearly deserves my rare gold award. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit my website to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.